Li Wuping had a dream. He dreamed that he seemed to be in the battlefield, and every poor was excited. When he took his brother in and out, and was about to win, an inexplicable torrent rushed his team to pieces and broke into pieces. After a short rest, he regrouped and fought again, this time he paid attention to the strength of the army using the level, first slowly advance in the front, attract firepower and then carry out a sneak attack in the back, and finally after a frontal assault with a strong wind and rain, kill the opponent and lose their armor and disarm, unable to fight again. The warm sunlight shone on his face, and there was a burst of warmth. Li Whooping, who was wandering between the awake and the unawakened, didn't have time to open his eyes, so he stretched his right hand to the pillow and groped, muttering in his heart, didn't the phone alarm go off again? Maybe I fell asleep after turning it off. What time is it? I still have an appointment today, and it would be miserable if I was late because I overslept. Hey, where's my cell phone? Lee Whooping turned to one side and forced his heavy eyelids to open. As a result, he didn't find his mobile phone, and he didn't even see his bedroom. What caught his eye was the slightly messy clothes, full of medieval-style decoration designs, and the sun shining on his face through the window, which was very dazzling. All this made him both familiar and unfamiliar. Isn't this the scene from the dream last night, haven't I woken up yet? Seemingly aware of something, Li Whooping, who was lying on his side, tried to turn his body to the other side, as if the rusted gear that had been in disrepair for a long time, every time his neck turned, he could feel the stiffness in it. A woman, a sleeping, beautiful female face, which made him have an illusion that he was still in a dream. Too tired in a dream can also cause dizziness? No, this is impossible, the unacceptable Lee Whipping closed his eyes and prayed, I am dreaming, I am dreaming. Wake up fast, wake up fast. Then, the eyes opened a slit to peek. Depend on. Who is this woman? Why is it in my bed? What the happened last night? This made a big mistake. Lee Whipping, who has always called himself an honest and trustworthy little man, is now completely ruined, and he stares ruthlessly at this unfamiliar woman in front of him. Eyelashes trembled from breathing. Sweat stains remained on the tip of the erect nose, and the cherry mouth opened and closed slightly in her sleep, highlighting a delicate and attractive one. This made him have a sinful thought, it seems that it is not a loss to spend a good night with such a woman. Calm down. Lee Whooping gave himself two mouths in his heart, is this a question of whether it is a loss or not? He opened the quilt and glanced in, so his last hope was also dashed. But I really don't know her. Did you drink last night? Neither. The plot of this third-rate soap opera can actually happen to me. Lee Whooping, who was about to cry without tears, lifted the quilt on his body and carefully turned over and got out of bed. Just as he was sitting on the edge of the bed, trying to pick out his own from the pile of mixed clothes, a pair of soft and boneless hands quietly silently climbed onto his waist and quickly moved to his chest. At the same time, his back was squeezed by a heavy object, and the heat of the woman's breathing came from his ear, you were awesome last night. Is this a compliment? It must be. In addition, the language she speaks is very unfamiliar, but I can understand the meaning. It seems to be ruin language, wait, ruin. When the woman saw that he didn't respond, she felt the tension of this body, her hands flowed down the river brushing over her regular and healthy abdominal muscles, and when she was about to reach the destination, she was caught by the man's hand. She didn't struggle, but chuckled. One sound, what are you nervous about? You weren't so shy last night. Woman, your behavior makes me very confused. Did I sleep with you or did you sleep with me? This is a philosophical question, and probably a physical question. Lee Whooping has a lot of thoughts, but they are all entangled and tied into countless knots. He is not in the mood to flirt, and he just wants to find an excuse to leave, I'm going to the bathroom. What blurted out was the standard Ruin official language, the Backlund accent. He casually picked up a piece of clothing and simply wrapped his body, and walked quickly towards the door, 
a woman's sweet voice came from behind him, the bathroom is in the second room near the stairs. Li Wuping's forward pace paused for a while, but he didn't look back. He just responded with a simple um, and then closed the door softly. Standing in the corridor, he took a deep breath, put his hands on the railing, endured the stinging pain caused by the memory fragments that kept popping up in his mind, calmed down a little, and walked straight into the bathroom. Strange to say, this closed, narrow space actually gave him an inexplicable sense of security. The reason is probably because he has traveled through, and here is a secret world. The man in the mirror is young and handsome. He looks twenty years old. He has light blue pupils, deep eye sockets, three-dimensional and delicate facial features, slightly thin lips, and short black hair that is messy and unrestrained. Joyce Best, a new baron of the Ruin Kingdom, charming in appearance and noble in status, his mother died when he was young, and his father died in a war not long ago. If you don't consider being cursed or sacrificed any time, anywhere risk, it's a perfect traversal object. Lee whooping. No, Joyce Best laughed at himself in the mirror, his eyes full of helplessness and bitterness. In his previous life, he had read a lot of time travel novels, and he had also fantasized about the story of killing the quartet after his time travel, but mystery was one of the worlds he didn't want to travel through. The underlying logic of this world is chaotic and crazy. Even the people here and the gods are not very normal, and they will face the end of the world in their lifetime. It can really be said to be a home travel, traveling through the world that must be chosen to die. Why am I so unlucky? Doomsday, outer gods. Wait, shouldn't I, who know these secret knowledge, die violently on the spot? Why am I still alive? Could it be that I have been contaminated? Became a favored by an outer god? But I'm just an ordinary person who isn't even a sequence nine. Phew. The memory fragments that popped up in my mind showed that the original owner was chasing extraordinary knowledge and power recently, um, this is very reasonable. He took a deep breath, took a deep breath, and threw a handful of clean water on his face to temporarily calm down the turbulent mood. He began to look through the memories that kept pouring out of his mind. Today is May 22, 1349. The arrival of the fool seems to be at the end of June. Don't ask me why I can't remember the exact time, whoever reads novels will go to memorize the timeline, don't they all follow the plot line of the story? We don't know that we will travel through time, otherwise we must memorize the whole book. However, there are all kinds of sealed artifacts in this world, and there are many ways to awaken memory. He knows more than one. The audience is mind reading, divination, and psychic, if you are brave, you can also pray to the gods. Well, the last line lose. Joyce, are you okay? The knock on the door and the woman's questioning came very suddenly, and he was so frightened that his whole body shuddered, like a bird frightened. It'll be fine right away. After solving the personal problem, along with the sound of the simple toilet flushing, the information of the woman outside the door was quickly sorted out in my mind. There was not much information, but Joyce's face changed again and again. Her name is Emily, and she met the original owner in a coincidence. Coincidence? Gan. At that time Joyce was chasing extraordinary power. After Emily showed many magical abilities including invisibility and manipulating flames, the original owner's longing for extraordinary was completely captured, and he went on the road of licking dogs without hesitation. Until last night, he was still dreaming of the double dream of embracing beauty and gaining extraordinary power. Oh sin! I'm sleeping with a witch? Joyce rubbed his face vigorously, trying to make the sluggish expression come alive, and the countless neurons in his head were running wildly, the original owner was a fool who was charmed by the witch, so as long as he showed the self-consciousness of a senior dog licking, there is a high probability that it won't be seen through, it's time to test your acting skills, come on, you can do it. Then Joyce directly opened the bathroom door, he didn't want a witch to wait impatiently. Outside the door, Emily was wearing only a tool-style dress, leaning on the railing on the second floor, 
her proud figure looming in the sunlight, she walked to Joyce, and pointed her finger on his chest, he laughed in a tone that couldn't tell whether it was you or desire, I thought you were reluctant to come out. How could that be? If you really want to bear it, you should be able to bear you, such a charming beauty. Joyce said flirting words in his mouth, but he actually roared in his heart, how come you are so skilled, hey? Emily showed a happy expression and said with a smile, you are sweet. But I like it. Since you have satisfied me, I should also fulfill your wishes. Come with me. She threw a wink, turned and walked downstairs. Wish? What wish? Yes, become an extraordinary. But she is a witch, is there any other way of potion formula? Could it be that I have to go the witch path? Do not. At this time, Joyce's mind was completely bleak and bleak. Come here quickly. Emily was standing in the middle of the stairs, hooking him affectionately. This is a small two-story townhouse. The decoration looks a bit old, and there will be a crunching sound when you step on the stairs. Joyce followed Emily with heavy steps, every step seemed to lead to the abyss, and he was helpless. Finally, the destination has arrived. It was a dark room with no sunlight. Joyce walked in, as if being swallowed by a beast. In the closed room, under the dim orange light, stood a pair of men and women with thin clothes. There is a pile of chemical experiment equipment on the table in front of her. Emily is skillfully performing the distillation operation, while she is teaching Joyce the basic knowledge of the extraordinary world. There is only one way for humans to obtain extraordinary abilities, and that is to take the corresponding magical medicine. Magic medicine consists of auxiliary materials and main materials. When configuring, you must put the auxiliary materials first, and first add pure water. It should be noted that a little more and a little less of the auxiliary materials will not affect the effect of the potion, but the main material must not be too much. Otherwise, what you configure will be a poison that seals the throat with blood. Joyce looked at it seriously, echoing it from time to time, like when she suddenly received a phone call from her girlfriend while playing games in her previous life, but what she thought in her mind was something else, is she configured. Assassin Potion? Wait, what's that in your hand? He saw Emily take out what looked like a clotted blood clot from an iron box and put it into a beaker that had been supplemented with auxiliary materials. Is that the Beyonder characteristic left over from the Beyonder after his death? Drink it, and you will become an Beyonder like me. Emily's original soft voice seemed to have turned into a whisper of the devil at this moment, Joyce looked at the cup of potion with tragic eyes, it was black like a pool of dirty mud, still bubbling. I'll be able to rub out flames like you in no time. He tried his best to make his tone excited to hide the actual temptation. Emily's beautiful eyebrows were slightly raised, and then the corners of her mouth turned up and said, this is just the assassin potion of sequence 9. After drinking it, you will gain the ability to sneak in the shadows, possess dark vision and supervision, and your fighting level will be greatly improved with dexterous steps and full power bursting into one the ability within a blow can even change the body in a short period of time, making it as light as a feather. Sure enough, it was an assassin, and it was indeed the witch path. Joyce was not in the mood to listen to her description afterward, but felt that the thunder was rolling and slashing straight at him. At the level of sequence 9, the combat power of assassins can be called the top ranks. Damn! the sequence 7 of this pathway will turn men into women. Can I not drink? Although I was a women's wearer in my previous life, no, a beauty blogger, I never thought about being a transgender. Joyce was so nervous that his lips were dry, he lowered his head and swallowed. His brain was running fast and he couldn't think of a good reason. Could he tell the truth? But he is just a rookie in the beyonder world, how could he know such secrets? What's more, the original owner had long been fascinated by her, and had absolutely no reason to refuse. He didn't want to test the conscience of a witch, even though Emily was always friendly. Gender is precious, and life is more valuable. The more hesitant at this time, 
the easier it is to make mistakes. He took the beaker and drank it. The potion melted in the mouth. It was not as difficult to swallow as he imagined, but it was cool and smooth, like drinking a cup of aloe vera. Shoes. The potion went all the way down the esophagus into the stomach, emitting a cold touch from the inside of the body along the way. Every cell in the body seemed to encounter the cold winter at the same time, giving Joyce the illusion that he was about to turn into ice cubes. Then, the lights in front of me became colorful, like a rainbow reflected by sunlight through a Mitsubishi mirror, colorful, but unfortunately, all the colors were swallowed up by darkness. The darkness in front of him was spreading towards him at an extremely fast speed, as if to devour him together. He struggled and resisted with all his strength. I don't know how long it took, the darkness slowly dissipated, and the body gradually regained consciousness. The dim orange light was like a beacon, bringing him back to the real world, and he couldn't help but feel a sense of protection. See the joyful feeling of the moonlight. At the same time, Emily's soft voice kept coming from his ears, which was to teach him how to control the overflow of the potion and avoid losing control. Concentrate, outline an object that does not exist in the world, restrain your spirituality, enter a state of meditation, and slowly restore peace. Joyce felt that he had entered the realm of emptiness between things and me, and his mentality became peaceful. The tension and fear brought about at the beginning of the journey were swept away. He opened his eyes, and what he saw was still Emily's charming face. Face. At this moment, he knew that he had become an assassin. Do you feel any changes in your body? Joyce waved his limbs and performed some of the usual training moves. He felt more at ease, without the slightest jerky feeling, and said with unconcealed joy, Until now, I didn't feel that this body really belonged to me. Congratulations. You are now a beyonder of sequence 9. Emily felt relieved when she heard the words, and gently applauded. It's a pity it's the witch path. Joyce forced the corners of his mouth to smile, and took the initiative to compliment, This is mainly due to you, dear. Since you can't resist, then learn to accept it. Anyway, the potion has already been drunk, and there is no way to jump for the time being. The best way that works at present is to fight with Emily and the snake. After all, the potion formula in the future is likely to be take it from her. Absolutely not because the witch tastes so good. Obviously, Emily was very satisfied with his remarks, she took the initiative to put on his body, and said softly, then you have to repay others well. Joyce raised his right hand and patted his chest, and said in a big way, as long as it's your business. I'm obliged. Oh, just talk when you talk, why pat me on the chest? Joyce sneered twice and explained, I made a mistake, I just became an extraordinary, so I can't help being a little excited. Naughty. The two cuddled back to the bedroom, and Emily said with a rare seriousness, Joyce, it's not necessarily a blessing to become an extraordinary. When you gain extraordinary power, you must also accept its curse. In fact, every extraordinary is at any time at the risk of losing control and becoming a monster. I've made up my mind. Joyce replied solemnly. He knew that the tide of the times was rolling in and danger was everywhere, and becoming an extraordinary was an inevitable choice, but he didn't expect that he had no choice and was forced to become an assassin. Very good. Emily added, in order to avoid the risk of losing control. Generations of extraordinary have summed up a set of methods to digest potions, that is, acting, and the name of the potion is the role you want to play. Through this kind of play can effectively reduce the risk of loss of control. This kind of earnest and instructive tone makes Joyce a little confused. It doesn't look like a witch at all, but rather like the tone of a night watchman. The only difference is, we are guardians and we are a group of poor people who are always fighting against danger and madness. Insect. Could she be an extraordinary of some church? Can't remember which church cultivates witches? Do you understand? Ah. I understand, you you reading www.uuganshu.com is very clear. Emily laughed again, 
and her tone was no longer serious, that's good, I don't want you to become a monster. I don't want to either. Joyce said this very sincerely. How are you going to play an assassin? Emily asked curiously. Joyce's brain was running at a high speed, thinking about how he would answer this question with his original character, and tentatively said, Biam is full of pirates, gangsters, and rebels, I want to be an executioner in the dark and uphold justice. Destroy evil. Seemingly shocked by his second answer, Emily was silent for a few seconds, then opened her mouth and praised, It's a really good idea, just right, maybe I can provide a target as your novice task. I saw that I was waiting here. Joyston became cautious, and still kept an exaggerated tone on his mouth, Dear, as long as you speak. Emily took out a sketch from somewhere. The portrait was of a man in his forties, neatly dressed and wearing a pair of silver-rimmed glasses, like a standard lone gentleman. Fortunately, it's not single-rimmed glasses, otherwise I'll report you to the church when I go back. Joyce was startled at first, and then slandered in his heart. His name is Locke. He used to be the captain of a pirate ship. He has committed many crimes. Now he lives in seclusion in Biam. He used to live in Inmat Street. Now he has probably moved out. You can investigate me is it true? Joyce didn't want to look at the pair of glasses, put away the portrait and said, My dear, of course I believe you. It's so kind of you. What is the experience of pretending to fall in love with a witch? Thank you for your invitation. I just came out of the witch's house. There are too many people, so I'm hiding. Fortunately, as a modern young man who has experienced the explosion of knowledge, he has seen many routines in the relationship between men and women, which supported him in Emily's entanglement for a long time, coaxed her into a grin, and showed a complete look of love. She was obsessed and made an appointment for the next meeting, so she was able to escape safely. Stopping a carriage on the side of the road, Joyce, who consumed a lot of energy, ignored the respect of the driver and rushed into the carriage. At this time, he had lost the innocent licking of the dog before, but a look of contemplation. Emily, don't care about her real name or pseudonym, she is a witch, there is no doubt about this, the high probability will not exceed sequence 6, after all. Sequence 5 Beyonders are considered to be quasi-high evil no matter what organization they are in, and they will not be reduced to seduce a self who is not even an extraordinary with his body. A member of the witch sect? Thinking of the source of the assassin extraordinary characteristics. Perhaps, I was not her first temptation object, what was her purpose for doing all this? The pirate named Locke? No. How can a target who can be handed over to me to assassinate escape the assassination of a witch, unless Emily can't do it herself for some reason, so she has to secretly train me as a backup? This is the most logical inference, and of course it does not rule out the possibility that Pirate Locke is just a pretense. I need the potion formula in the future. She is the most direct source. Since I have already made a bet, I naturally don't care about continuing to increase the weight. Well, go back and let someone check the details of Charluck. If the crime is really heinous, then make him the first assassination target. This is the fate of the assassin, unless you don't want to continue to improve the sequence. Alas, I feel depressed just thinking about it. If he had a choice, he would definitely not choose the witch path, not only because of the issue of change but because this path does not help his memory at all. If you choose a generalist, the potion formula that appeared in the original book is a great wealth. How can you be like now, can't remember one, and even worry about the potion of sequence 8? Wait, I don't seem to even have the formula for sequence 9, and Emily didn't give it to me. She forgot? The carriage jolted a bit, it should have been a stone which made Joyce's thoughts move away from the witch and start thinking about the current situation. Although Biam is a colony, as the fulcrum of the Lone Kingdom's colonial rule in the central Sunia Sea, it has gradually developed into the most prosperous city in this sea area. There are extraordinary from the Church of Storms headed by Sea King, 
and the military force whose duty is to destroy the rebels and maintain the colonial rule is enough to make the most daring pirates shrink their tails and become human beings. The gathering of many beyonders naturally formed many underground trading gatherings related to beyonder materials and mysticism. Officials also turned a blind eye to this. To sum up, this place is very suitable for the survival and development of a wild rookie like Joyce who has just stepped into the extraordinary world. Bearing the title of a noble. Of course, when it comes to esoteric knowledge, one person on the island counts as one, but he is not as rich as he is. He has decided to spend a lot of time in Biam, at least the low sequences like this, in addition to the above objective reasons, there are two subjective reasons, first, the original body has lived here for nearly 20 years, and the interpersonal relationship is quite broad. In addition, his deceased father has left him rich political resources, mainly at the military level, such as his current status as a baron. Second, the role of an assassin needs life as an embellishment, as does the instigator of Sequence 8, while Biam is mixed with snakes and wicked people, which can effectively alleviate his guilt after causing disasters, which is to avoid necessary checks and balances out of control. Becoming an extraordinary means that there must be a bottom line, otherwise, the National People's Congress will likely lose control in the process of constantly breaking through the offline line, or be tempted by the evil god. This kind of insight was something I never had when reading novels in my previous life. In the original book, whether it is Klein or others, after drinking the potion, there will always be a near-miss promotion, but Joyce, who has just become an assassin, has a different understanding. The reason why he, she, can be promoted smoothly comes from a strong heart and will, and this quality is what Li Whipping, who has lived in a peaceful foodie empire for a long time, lacks, so much that the potion of sequence 9 makes him heavy burden. He needs time to adapt. Sir, Rose Manor is here. Joyce stepped out of the carriage and noticed the serval coachman standing beside him. He had dark skin and short black hair with natural curls. He was smiling flatteringly. Suddenly a little uncomfortable, not because of the attitude of the driver, but because of a sudden change from ordinary people to vested interests. He took out his wallet, took out a one-pound note and handed it to the driver, who said flattered, Sir, this is too much. Take it, I'm happy today. Thank you sir, you are really a generous and worthy gentleman. The coachman left with joy. Joyce watched it for a while, and realized that he didn't seem to have said not to give change, the coachman's operation is very skilled. He shook his head and smiled, turned, and walked towards the gate of the manor not far away. Byam's law stipulates that aboriginal carriages are not allowed to enter private territory without permission, otherwise the owner of the territory is eligible for expulsion or trial. Therefore, the carriage was only parked on the edge of the roadside sign, and in front of it was a stone path, and the plants on the roadside were even more vibrant. Biam in April is a livable season. The monsoon brings comfortable temperature and humidity from the sea, and everything begins to recover. Rose Manor is located on the north side near the coastline. Joyce's father bought it for a small amount of money in his early years as a family domain. It is said that it is a family, but in fact it is only the father and son. Joyce's ancestor won the title in the Battle of Breaking the Oath 600 years ago. Historically, there was an earl in the family, which was very prominent for a while. It is a pity that it cannot withstand the erosion of time after all. By the time of Joyce's father's generation, the title had already been lost, the family's property had been squandered, and the family members were almost withered. In order to restore the glory of his ancestors, his father resolutely joined the army. After more than ten years of military career, he became a lieutenant colonel, and finally won the canonization of a baron for his son, at the cost of his life. On the stone path leading to the manor, Joy stopped by the side of the road, picked a small orange flower and put it on the tip of his nose, smelling a natural fresh smell. The super eyesight brought by the assassin potion made him clearly see that someone was riding towards him. They were all servants of the manor. The middle-aged man who led the way was his father's most trusted subordinate, 
as well as the housekeeper and guard of the family. Long. Several people turned over and dismounted at a position ten paces away from him. Their movements were neat and uniform, and their voices were loud and powerful, which made one see that they were well trained. Lord Baron. Joyce smiled and said um, and said kindly to the butler standing at the front, Mr. Hunter, why are you making such a big battle? The middle-aged man's face was serious, his eyes were full of power, but his hairline was extremely unfriendly to him. He said calmly, Master, when you plan to spend the night away next time, you can consider bringing your servant back to report a letter. Joyce sneered twice, thinking that he was going out to meet the witch, of course it was not suitable to bring a servant, but knowing that he was worried about himself, he had to say a little embarrassedly, well. Next time, definitely next time. Then, he pretended to look up at the sky and bluntly changed the subject, ah, I'm so hungry, go back to eat quickly. Mr. Hunter kept his responsibilities in mind and just reminded him. He didn't ask any further questions, and made way out, I've asked Sophia to prepare. Really thoughtful. Joyce suddenly felt that being a noble was not bad. With the memory of his original body and the changes to his body brought about by the potion, he perfectly controlled the horses under him, and he truly felt the feeling of galloping on a horse. This made him look forward to the next food even more. The grilled fish with just the right heat is crispy on the outside and tender on the inside. The fishy smell of the sea fish itself is covered by the unique spices of biam, which makes the fish more delicious. The special pie is rich in gravy and seems to be mixed with a little fruit. It is fragrant but not greasy when you bite into it. The dessert after that is exquisite in style and tastes even better. Finally, a cup of refreshing and delicious iced tea is perfect. Joyce leaned back in his chair contentedly, sighing at the luxury of aristocratic life, and accidentally hiccuped. He glanced at the maids who were cleaning up the mess, and found that no one noticed this rude behavior. Sophia, help me prepare hot water, I'll take a bath in a while. Okay, Mr. Baron. Sophia is his current maid, blonde, blue-eyed, and sweet-looking. She once rejected the request beyond friendship that the original body made when she was drunk. This incident once made Joyce, who was a believer of the Lord of Storms, angry and angry, but later, in order to show the tolerance of men, she became his personal maid in a fit of anger. However, after meeting the witch Emily, she was immediately fascinated by her. This is a rich second-generation bear child. Joyce recalled his previous absurd and immature behavior, and walked upstairs slowly. As the sole owner of the manor, his bedroom is very spacious and decorated quite gorgeously. There are incomprehensible art paintings hanging on the wall, and the sun shines on the carpet through the floor-to-ceiling windows, exuding an expensive atmosphere. Sitting in front of the desk by the window, he picked up a book called The Collection of Roselle's Fairy Tales, he smiled knowingly, raising a sense of absurdity that illusory into reality, and at the same time teasing in his heart, Master Luo still it's everywhere. Joyce was long past the age when he liked fairy tales, so he picked up this book not to read it. He skillfully opened the middle layer of the book and took out two letters of different materials. The two letters have a common owner, his father, Lieutenant Colonel of the Ruin Kingdom, William Best. He was the first to open the letter enclosed in the white envelope, which was a suicide note. As a Lieutenant Colonel, William Best had the right to be allowed to write a letter to his family before taking part in a more dangerous war mission. If he returns safely after completing the task, the letter will be returned intact. If he is unfortunately sacrificed, the letter will become his suicide note to his relatives. The letter was indeed his father's handwriting, and the tone was rather relaxed and casual. He seemed to think that the mission was not very dangerous, it was just a routine matter, but unfortunately, he did not come back alive. This doesn't seem to be anything to blame. In wars involving beyonders, the death of a lieutenant colonel is not uncommon. But, perhaps because of the bystanders, Joyce is now keenly aware of the unusualness behind the incident. What was William Best's death in exchange for? 
a large pension, various condolences from the military, government and the church, including many big figures, even more incredible is that the Emperor Ruin George III actually posthumously named William a baron. Is this the kind of treatment a lieutenant colonel should have? Lieutenant general is almost there. Don't talk about the descendants of nobles, a family with only two people left, a family that has been deprived of even the last title? That is civilians. Moreover, at the end of the suicide note, William used a stock that only the father and son could understand to prompt Joyce to find the second letter the one that had been hidden in the mezzanine of Russell's fairy tales by an unknown letter made of leather. The reason why Joyce left Byam and returned to Rose Manor was not only because of sadness, but also because of this letter. The letter contained very little, Dear Joyce, when you read this letter, I have returned to the Kingdom of Storms, which is a gift from the Lord and a destiny chosen by myself. The only regret is that I have to miss your adult life, but I believe that it will be as magnificent as the sea. Finally, let me give you a word, insisting on fairness and justice is the most noble quality of a person, not the status of aristocracy. Remember the game of hide and seek we played when we were kids? How I wish to play with you again. Signed, Always Love Your Father William Best. It seems that he has already anticipated his own death. What does the hide-and-seek that he deliberately mentioned at the end mean? Implying a suspended animation? Or is there another meaning? Finding the truth about William's death with the only scattered clues gave Joyce the illusion that he was playing a detective game, a real dangerous game, and he had a hunch that when the mystery was revealed one day, the meeting that awaited him. It's a monstrous vortex. Dong dong there was a knock on the door and the cold voice of the maid Sophia came from outside the door, breaking the illusion of Joyce, who was possessed by Sherlock Holmes. Mr. Baron, the water is ready, you can take a bath. Okay, come right away. Joyce responded first, then put the two letters back in the mezzanine of the book. After opening the door, he found Sophia still standing in the corridor, wondering, why are you still here? Sophia looked up at him and quickly lowered herself again, without a word. Why is there a bit of resentment in this look? I didn't think anything about you, E.R., although I had that kind of thought before. Wait, Joyce didn't know what to think, the corner of his mouth twitched, and he said righteously, Why don't you leave, is there nothing else to do? Sophia's eyelids twitched. She didn't know where his anger came from, but she didn't dare to ask. So she said aggrieved, I see, Mr. Baron. Looking at her back as she turned and walked away, Joyce breathed a sigh of relief, and couldn't help complaining in his heart, you kid has finished enjoying the blessing and left, but you want me to pay the debt for you, this blood loss. However, it's nice to take a hot bath. In the misty bathroom, the temperature of the water under him was just right, some unknown petals were floating on the water and there seemed to be a smell similar to essential oils in the air. It would be even better if there was a projection on the wall to watch movies. Joyce lay in the bathtub with his head resting on the groove on the edge, and fell asleep unconsciously with his eyes closed. He had a dream. In the dream, Lee Whipping did not travel, and was looking forward to going to a jade carving shop to pick up his custom jade pendant. This is one of his little hobbies. I remember that every time I read Journey to the West when I was a child, I would buy a golden hoop stick and go home to play with it. After reading Romance of the Three Kingdoms, I bought a feather fan to play Zhuge Yang, who is a feather fan. I believe that most people have this habit, but Li Whipping kept it until adulthood. Yu Yu reading www.yuyuganshu.com later, he liked online novels, and when he first read Dao Baekhyun, he bought a Xian Kongqi. A few days ago, I finished reading The Lord of Mysteries on the recommendation of a friend, so I customized this jade pendant and asked the store owner to carve some complicated patterns according to his requirements. Half symbolizes the secret eye without pupils, and the other half symbolizes the changing twisted line, and the two overlap each other. The craftsmanship of carving is quite good. Li Whipping likes it very much. After playing with it for a while, 
he even put it by his pillow when he was sleeping. In the end, he had a spring dream, and when he woke up, he found that he had passed through. Time travel. Joyce woke up suddenly, splashing the ground. He didn't care about these details, but asked himself, why did he ignore such a crucial issue? This is a mysterious world. I can't pass through for no reason. Who is behind everything? The goddess of the night? I don't know why, the first thing that came to Joyce's mind was the goddess, but thinking about it carefully, he didn't seem to have authority in this regard. If you consider that Jade Pendant, it may be a fool, but Klein hasn't come yet. Am I the second hand of Tianzun? This is the reason why I am still alive after learning about the Outer Gods? At this moment, the helplessness of fate and the awe of gods occupied his entire body and mind. All the gifts of fate have already been marked with prices in secret. Believe in the power of the gods, not in their mercy. No matter who the chess player is behind the scenes and what the purpose is, he is just a chess piece and is completely powerless to resist. Joyce wanted to cry but no tears, it's just a cross, why don't you make it so complicated? If the memory of the previous life was not manipulated, then I am probably also an ancient human who fell from the origin castle. Who is capable of doing this? Tianzun, Klein after becoming the fool, an outer god with similar authority? Given the current point in time, the answer doesn't seem too hard to guess. Is there a way to verify this answer? In fact, there is the transfer ceremony, if I am the successor of Tianzun, I am naturally qualified to be the master of Origin Castle. But I am not an extraordinary in the Go Sanjia pathway, such as diver, apprentice, or thief, but I was forced to choose the assassin pathway. Will Origin Castle still respond to me? No matter what, you have to try it out. Are the transmigrators who don't want to change their lives against the sky or transmigrators? Thinking of it, he did it immediately. Joyce put on a bathrobe and called Sophia to instruct, prepare four local staples and send them to my bedroom. Ah, uh, what? Sophia suspected that she had auditory hallucinations, and stared at him with wide eyes, feeling more and more that today's Mr. Baron was a different person. First, she didn't have to serve herself in the bath, and now she made such a strange request. Don't understand. Understood. I will immediately instruct the kitchen to do it. ASAP. Joyce, who received a satisfactory answer, hurried back to the bedroom, feeling nervous and excited. If he really became the new owner of Origin Castle, he would have to take on its destiny, be the enemy of Amun, and resist the will of Tianzun's awakening. Constantly worrying about gains and losses, Sophia brought four staple meals. A loaf of toast a bowl of egg noodles, a steak, and a plate of seafood fried rice. Good guy. This is because I feel that I am not satisfied with the previous food, so I specially prepared a few more and let me eat whatever I want. I'm not a rice bucket. Joyce muttered in his heart, and kept moving his hands, placing the four main dishes in the four corners of the room, and then came to the center of the room. To ask him why he is so proficient, of course, it is because Li Whipping once held this ceremony as a sophomore before the time travel. Take four steps counterclockwise, walk out of a square, and recite in your heart with each step you take, Fushin Xian Wang Zian Zun, Fushin Xian Wang Tian Zun, Fushin Xian Wang God, Fushin Xian Wang Tian Zun. After the ceremony, Joy stood on the spot with his eyes closed, a little anticipation and a little uneasy. I don't know how long it took, just when he was about to give up a thin grey mist suddenly appeared in front of him. Before he had time to get excited, the mist disappeared quickly, as if it had never appeared, as if, Yuan Bao didn't want to pay attention to you, and rolled his eyes at you. Phew! I don't know why, but Joyce breathed a sigh of relief after the failure. Maybe his subconscious didn't want to be a fool at all. In addition, maybe it was an afterthought. Joyce recalled that when he woke up after transmigration, he did not see the black velvet curtain formed by the characteristics of the Servant of Mysteries. Does this mean that my transmigration has nothing to do with Heavenly Venerate? 
no, it can't be so arbitrary, never underestimate the power of the gods, walking on thin ice is the law of survival in the mysterious world. However, I am not without gain. Joyce couldn't help drawing a handsome arc at the corner of his mouth. With the help of the transfer ceremony just now, he successfully leveraged a little power of Origin Castle, and as one of the Origin quality, Origin Fort's personality is high enough to allow him to perceive spiritual fluctuations that he could not detect before. It turns out that picking wool is such a cool thing. Instead, it is a risk-free operation, not to look directly at the gods for death. Joyce mocked someone's operation of the gods in his heart, and walked towards the source of abnormal spiritual fluctuations the bed. Dong 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 with his middle finger, he tapped the wainscoting at the head of the bed, which, as expected, was hollow. After a destructive search, he finally found the hidden mechanism hidden under the expensive blanket. It was an oval protrusion, symmetrical on the left and right sides. Pulling it out, he succeeded. Pull out about 3 centimeters, then rotate it about 90 degrees clockwise, and press it back firmly. The sound of the click came from the inside of the bed, a door suddenly opened in the middle of the wall panel, and a wooden box popped out from it, just like the parrot at the hour, the difference was that there was no sound, he picked it up the box, the mechanism is closed again, and the seam is tight. The wooden box is just the kind of box that is usually seen. There is no carving, no mechanism, or even a chain. Joyce was silent for a moment, and when he opened it, he found that there were only three items inside, a leather notebook, two small iron boxes, one large and one small, all blocked by the spiritual wall. Is this the game of hide-and-seek mentioned in William's letter? It turned out to be just hide-and-seek. self die hua is okay, Joyce shook his head with a wry smile and took the lead in picking up the notebook that seemed to be quite old. Turning to the first page, it was written in ruin language, I established the best family, and the glory started from here. This should be left by the ancestor who won the title in the battle of breaking the oath. The grammar and words in the sentence can prove its age. The content after that is the notes left by the heirs of each generation of the family, including pride, loneliness, and remorse. Joyce seems to have seen the rise and fall of a family. It is like a boat, in the long river of history. Drifting with the flow, and finally being ruthlessly knocked over by the waves. Turning to the last page with words, it is the handwriting of Father William, which reads, The glory of the family will be reproduced in me. The next page was supposed to be reserved for Joyce. He opened it in a complicated mood. There was no word on it but he found another envelope sandwiched there. Why should I say it again? William Best, how much you love to write. With a pinch of fingers, it looked like there were more than one piece of letter paper, he leaned back on the chair, lifted the varnish, and began to read. Dear Joyce, if you can find this wooden box, I believe you are already an extraordinary. First of all, please forgive me for making things so complicated. This is the last lesson my father taught you, to survive in the extraordinary world, no matter what no matter how prudent, you must always maintain a humble heart, even if you are strong enough, there is always an existence in this world that you can't resist at all. The law of indestructibility of extraordinary characteristics, extraordinary characteristics will not be destroyed, will not be reduced, it will only be transferred from one carrier to another. The low sequence includes sequence 9 and sequence 8, sequence 7 to sequence 5 belong to the middle sequence, and sequence 4 the above is the high sequence. Absolutely don't be the enemy of the high sequence. All the potion formulas I know are written down below. UU reading www.uugonshu.com You can choose to train loyal subordinates to become beyonders, and they will be your right-hand helpers. The potion formula and related abilities are as follows, Sequence 9 Arbiter, Sequence 8 Sheriff, Sequence 7 Interrogator, Sequence 6 Judge, Hunter Path Sequence 9 Hunter, Sequence 8 Provocateur, Sequence 9 Lawyer of Lawyer Path, Butler Hunter is the Sequence 8 Provocateur of the Hunter Pathway. He is absolutely loyal to me. When you feel that you can control him, 
you can give him the contents of the small iron box. That is the sequence 7 arsonist. It's a pity that I didn't get the potion formula back then, and I need you to search for it. In another iron box is a magical item, its original form is a dagger. When you infuse spirituality, it can be turned into any weapon you want, and you gain expert level skills in using the weapon, while extremely a big boost to your physical strength. Its negative effect is very simple, but it is dangerous enough. People who use it will gradually become crazy and bloodthirsty. This kind of change is silent. When the time involved exceeds a certain limit, you will become without warning. A demon who wants to kill everyone. With the letter in his hand, Joyce looked at the two iron boxes blocked by the spiritual wall, and said nothing for a long time. Occult knowledge, potion formula, beyond their characteristics, exhortation for the future, a father pouring all his love into his son. Joyce's heart is heavy, this is the simplest and most sincere emotion, and he thinks of himself again there will never be a chance to see the parents and friends of the previous life again, and what is even more tragic is that they may just be a dream of their own. He will accept this gift, and he will also take responsibility to make the best family recreate glory. This is the promise of a traveler. While empathizing for this deep fatherly love, Joyce suddenly realized a problem. If William simply gave this knowledge to the original owner earlier, then he would not go out to seek the potion formula, so I won't meet the witch Emily, let alone become an assassin. Is this an example of a pit son? Reread the contents of the letter and confirm that there is no acting method. William does not know the relevant knowledge? Maybe no but swear not to go out? From this point of view, Emily is likely to be a member of the witch sect, and only a secret organization that only wants to cause disaster will popularize the playing method to members of low sequence. In short, you need to be more cautious when dealing with her. Mr. Baron, Mr. Charlie is here to visit. Charlie, why is he here? Joyce first recalled who Charlie was in his mind, and was quite surprised at his arrival, let him go to the living room first. Then, he restored the wooden box to its original state and put it back into the mechanism in the bed. After looking around, he noticed that the room had been turned in a mess by him, the corners of his mouth twitched slightly, and he walked out without looking back, find someone to clean up my room. Sophia thought she was dazzled when she entered the room. The sight in front of her had a great impact on her young mind. The four staple foods remained untouched, scattered in every corner, and the bed was overturned to the ground. She suspected that the Baron was suffering from mania, or performed some kind of wicked and crazy ritual. When Joyce walked to the living room, he began to worry about a question, will the agency be discovered by the servants? But on second thought, it has been put there for a long time and has not been found, how can there be such a coincidence, if I care about it, it will be messed up. The weather is nice today. Joyce walked into the living room and saw Charlie sitting on a chair drinking coffee, so he took the initiative to say hello. Charlie's father is a retired military officer who is now serving in the colonial government. In Biam, there are many young people with similar backgrounds, and they naturally form a small circle. That's right, so instead of riding in a carriage, I came on horseback. Charlie put down his coffee cup and pretended to complain, but this manor is too far from the city. When do you plan to move back? It's just two days. Joyce replied casually, the main purpose of being in Rose Manor has been achieved, and he has no reason to stay here. Comparatively speaking, the chance of contacting the extraordinary is greater in the city. Great. Charlie clapped his hands excitedly. He didn't expect the biggest purpose of the trip to be achieved so easily, and he didn't seem to have done anything yet. Although it was a bit weird, it didn't prevent him from being happy, the light of hope is rising on the horizon. Take firm steps, identify the direction, and quickly chase forward. Joyce gave him a sideways look, it's not like something you would say. Well, haha. Charlie laughed awkwardly and explained, it was actually Thomas who said that, you know, he always advertises himself as a poet. 
Joyce gave a simple um and took a sip of the coffee. The bitter taste spread throughout his mouth, causing him to frown. You've already missed two gatherings, and everyone is worried, so they sent me here as a representative to offer condolences. If they know you've regained optimism, they'll definitely be happy for you. Seeing Charlie's excitement and even a little overdone, and feeling that he cared about him without falsehood, Joyce said with emotion, as you said, sadness will always pass, and hope is the eternal theme. As soon as she finished speaking, Sophia with a complicated expression walked in with two trays of delicate pastries. She looked up at Mr. Barron, and found that he was sitting there calmly, with the coffee on the table untouched. She also inadvertently found that Mr. Charlie was looking at her and Mr. Barron with an ambiguous look, which made her a little uncomfortable, and quickly backed out. Seeing the back of the maid disappearing into the shadow of the corridor, and then looking at Joyce sitting on the chair, Charlie suddenly leaned in and asked in a beating tone, Is the medicine I gave you very powerful, can your little maid bear it? Medicine? What medicine? Joyce was surprised at first, and then recalled one incident. Before he went to bed with the witch Emily, he did drink a powdered thing. Is that a potion that improves, that ability? Mummy powder? Charlie doesn't know about himself and Emily, so he thinks that medicine was used by me on Sophia. Gan, I am now seriously doubting the nature of these people's gatherings. After Joyce thought about the cause and effect, his expression almost froze. He calmly took a sip of bitter coffee and said indifferently, I gave it to a friend. Charlie looks like I understand and won't go out, I understand. Low EQ you really make me want to beat you up. High EQ, you have the potential to be a hunter. Joyce asked without looking at his funny facial features, is there anything else? No. Charlie said in an exaggerated tone with a look of disbelief, I came to see you so warmly, yet you drove me away? It's so sad. This kid is a joke. Joyce watched him perform without saying a word. Charlie who had not received any feedback, pretended to cough twice, walked to the window as if nothing had happened, and said loudly, look at how suitable the weather is for hunting today. Hunting? The memory shows that the original owner and the others often hunt, but now he still has a lot of things to think about. Joyce subconsciously wanted to refuse, but on second thought, although the assassin potion has improved his fighting level, he has never after actual combat, Hunting can be regarded as a means of testing strength, so I changed my mind and agreed. Hunter and assassin are not separated. Behind the Rose Manor is a large forest. The ownership of the land is in Joyce's hands. There are many kinds of beasts in it, but it lacks deadly extraordinary creatures, making it an excellent hunting ground. Charlie and Joyce put on their hunting attire and rode side by side followed by Hunter the Provocateur and seven or eight guards, with double-barreled shotguns and modified steam rifles hanging from their saddles. I've been practicing my marksmanship hard recently, and I'll definitely beat you today. Charlie said aloud, looking quite confident. Joyce chuckled twice, picked up the left rifle and placed it in front of him, aiming in a standard gun-holding position. There was a bang, and the sight was hundreds of meters away and a flash of blood flashed. While Joyce closed the gun, the guard behind him had already galloped to the landing point, picked up a dead rabbit and shouted aloft, one shot to kill. Joyce is also very satisfied with this shot. His super eyesight and steady hands have indeed improved his marksmanship to a new level in an instant. He looked at Charlie's surprised expression, and provocatively said, How about it, is it better? Why not compare? Real men never admit counsel. Charlie beat his horse and rushed into the depths of the forest, shouting loudly, It's not certain who will win. Joyce motioned for the guards to follow a few, while he slowly fell behind, with an attitude of not caring about winning or losing. The thought in his mind now is, You can use a gun when you play the assassin. 800 meters away, kill the enemy dog head with one shot, and then leave calmly, how unrestrained how handsome. But in doing so, the assassin should be renamed the sniper. One more thing, 
how is he going to investigate the assassination target given by Emily the Witch? Looking for a private detective? No, the target is likely to be an extraordinary, and it is very dangerous to involve ordinary people. But if you want to investigate by yourself, you have neither the time nor the experience, and it is easy to be surprised. So, at this time, I need a beyonder detective, maybe he can help me kill people. Where can I find such a person? Joyce searched the memory in his brain, and soon, he locked on a guy nicknamed Scale. Tianping is an extraordinary, and his deeper identity is a military informant. He organizes a small extraordinary gathering. Although he has never attended one time because of Emily's reasons, the situation is different now. On the one hand, he can entrust the investigation task to him, and on the other hand, he can communicate with other Beyonders. He knows a lot about the high-end knowledge and secrets of the Beyonder world, but the basic knowledge of mysticism is extremely lacking. Hearing the sound of gunshots coming from the front, Charlie probably had something to gain. He threw away the thoughts in his head and galloped forward. Next, happy hunting. I have to admit that in terms of hunting, hunters are not even better than assassins. Joyce found that Hunter, the provocateur, could track his prey according to the smell in the air. He was also good at making a variety of powders with different effects to drive or attract prey, which made the whole hunting match his expected passion. The Radiant has nothing to do with half a penny, but more like an outing. After the hunt was over, and after enjoying a delicious barbecue meal, Charlie took his prey and left the Rose Garden. Sharing the rest of the prey with the servants, Joyce took a walk in the manor while it was dark. The crimson moon hung high in the sky, and the stars adorned it more and more beautifully. He almost subconsciously praised the goddess in his chest. He raised his hands, but suddenly realized that he was a believer of the Lord of Storms. Chest, the storm is on. Is this blasphemous? I won't be struck by lightning from the sky, will I? He looked up at the sky. The night sky was dark and silent, and there was no movement. Yes, the Evernight Goddess and the Lord of the Storm have always had a good relationship. Stop your dangerous thoughts, Joyce, although I have become an assassin, I still don't want to believe in the primordial witch. He shook his head, turned his head and said to Sophia who was following behind him, If I want to move back to Biam, how long will it take? The maid pondered for two seconds and then said, Byam's house has always been inhabited and cleaned. If you want to go back and live there, you can always. To allow time for the servants to pack their luggage, it is just tomorrow to entrust the investigation task to Bian Ping, and by the way to ask about the time of the extraordinary party. Joyce arranged the itinerary, and decided, then leave here the day after tomorrow, you go to arrange one time. Okay, Mr. Baron. Sophia bowed slightly and answered the errand. Joyce gave an inaudible um, stopped talking, and walked aimlessly, thinking of a lot of things, but most of them were irrelevant. Do you think this world is beautiful? Sophia couldn't remember the first time that Mr. Baron surprised her today. She hesitated for a moment and replied, well enough. The ignorant is fearless. Joyce is inexplicably envious of the maid behind him and probably the thing that bothers her the most is just me making things difficult for her. He sighed silently, go back to rest and have a good dream. Sophia turned to leave, and heard Mr. Baron's voice from behind, one more thing, you don't need to be so tense when facing me in the future. She bit her lower lip inexplicably, and when she looked back, she found that Joyce had gone far. On the first night in this world, well, maybe the second night, Joyce slept soundly. There was no unbearable babble, and there was no more witch on the bed after waking up. Standing on the balcony of the bedroom, he stretched recklessly against the bright morning sun, and saw that the servants in the manor became busy, like a group of ants preparing to return to their nests. It seems that Sophia's workability is still very good. Joyce smiled with satisfaction, considering whether to increase her annual salary, um, next time. Breakfast is a medium-rare steak, paired with the cellared red wine produced by Rose Manor. 
He had just finished eating when the housekeeper hunter just walked in. Master, look for me. Joyce nodded, put down the coffee with sugar and milk in his hand, wiped the corners of his mouth with a napkin, and finally said, I'll go out in a while, please prepare a carriage. Before waiting for Mr. Hunter, who has a high hairline to agree, he added, the carriage is just ordinary, I'm not going to the banquet. Also, tell Sophia, help me find one. Simple, some clothes. He originally wanted to talk about cheaper clothes, but thinking that a decent noble attaches great importance to his image, he changed his words at the end. Okay, young master, do you have any other orders? No. Oh, by the way, I have decided to move back to Bayam tomorrow. Yes, Sophia informed me last night. Really professional. Joyce watched him bow and leave, feeling very emotional, and at the same time despised the speed of his own degeneration. The provocateur hunter was very efficient, and after a while he reported that the carriage was ready. It was a four-wheeled carriage that looked ordinary from the outside. The driver was a guard dressed in casual clothes. Joyce recognized him as one of the guards who accompanied him on the hunt yesterday. His name was Carl. Go to the Oak Bar in Josem. Joyce nodded to the coachman. After entering the carriage, he found expensive and comfortable blankets and cushions. He also thought that Carl must have guns and weapons on him. Woolen cloth. Without a word, the carriage stopped at the entrance of the bar. Telling Carl to wait in the carriage, Joyce pushed open the door of the bar. The smell of alcohol, mixed with strange and indescribable tastes, blows on the face. There are not too many customers, but it does not prevent them from drinking and bragging. Joyce walked through the crowd indifferently, walked to the bar, took out two one s soul coins, didn't say what wine he wanted, just asked, where's the balance? The bartender was wiping the glass. He heard the sound and glanced at him, then looked at the coins on the counter, and took them away quietly, and then he showed a bright smile, the bosses in the chess and card room know too. Tian Ping is a man in his thirties, his body is not strong, but the majesty revealed invisibly is easy to convince. He is playing cards with a few people, and when he sees Joyce coming in, doubts flashed in his eyes. Which quickly turns into an unabashed surprise. Mr. Baron, long time no see. Hearing this title, Joyce didn't know what to say, because it was the code name he gave himself, I need your help with something. Hearing that there was a request, Mr. Tian Ping said to his subordinates, you guys play for me first. Follow me. Joyce smiled and nodded to everyone in the room, and followed him into an empty chess and card room. Sit down, have something to drink. No. Mr. Libra didn't force it, poured himself a glass of Southwell beer, sat opposite Joyce and asked, what commission? Joyce took out a portrait and placed it on the table, his name is Locke, he has a long career as a pirate, once lived in the Inmat neighborhood of Biam, I need his address, behavior, hobbies, committed before retirement the more detailed the crimes, the better. Mr. Tian Ping took a gulp of beer picked up the portrait and studied it carefully for a while, and commented, looks like a standard lone gentleman. Such a person talks more and less in Biam. Is he an extraordinary? The high probability is, no more than sequence 8. The witch Emily's purpose of approaching her must be more than that. From this, it can be speculated that the target cannot be an extraordinary of the middle and high sequence, otherwise it would not be called acting but death. Joyce, who had already figured this out, answered very sure. Extraordinary. Tian Ping smacked his lips and said, you know, things involving beyonders are not simple, maybe a group of people will be attracted, and the information you want is too complicated. One hundred pounds. Joyce didn't care whether he shied away or wanted to take the opportunity to increase the price, he simply settled on a price that he couldn't refuse make a deal. The balance resolutely agreed, and a similar commission can be up to 50 pounds. As for Beyonders. In Biam, 
commissions that are not related to beyonders are rare. In a week, I'll give you a message. Very good. Joyce took out twenty pounds and pressed it on the portrait, this is the deposit. Putting away the portrait and the cash, Li Ping drank the remaining half glass of wine, celebrating the deal, Mr. Baron, today's party will take a while to start, why don't we go and play two games first? Extraordinary gathering? Just today, what a coincidence. Joyce thought for a while and agreed to his invitation, I'm worried that your wallet is not enough. Haha, <laughs> I like your confidence. 28 Kong, an uncomplicated card game. Its rules are very similar to Texas Hold'em, but it is relatively simple. First, all the cards with patterns in a deck of cards are discarded, leaving only 40 number cards. One player is the banker, and the rest is the player. Each player is dealt two cards. The sum of the numbers of the two cards is used to compare the size of the two cards. The pair is greater than the loose cards. That is, four or six is the smallest, and double ten is the largest. Joyce, who quickly figured out the rules of the game, sat on the opposite side of the balance and watched the dealer put two cards on the one sole coin he used as the bottom bet. Turning over the cards above, a square two, Joyce learned the action of God of Gamblers and put the two cards against each other. Instead of rushing to turn over the second card, he looked at it. Mr. Balance that is, the action of the banker. There is no interest relationship between the players in this game, and the dealer is the one who takes all. You can place your bets. Scales turned over and glanced at his trump card, and said with a unchanged expression. The man on the left murmured something, then put his cards on the table and folded his bet, which means that even if his hand is higher than the dealer's in the end, he will lose his ante. Joyce turned over the second card, a six of hearts, with a total of eight points. If he didn't touch a pair, it was already a big card. After thinking for a while, he said, add five soles. Scale turned the coin in his hand for a while, and seemed a little surprised, for a newcomer, you are very courageous. Games always favor newcomers. Joyce smiled indifferently and said casually. The man on the right flashed with joy after seeing the cards. After betting the top pound, he directly opened the whole card in his hand, a pair of threes. Seeing this, Joyce also turned over his cards, Scales smiled wryly, and showed his cards, a straw three and a diamond five. It's also eight, but six to five, so Joyce wins six soles, and the dealer only gets one sole of the fold's ante, and loses a full pound to the smiling pair three classmate zero one sole. This is a game of pure luck, of course, without anyone cheating. Even if the stakes are small, there will still be big wins and losses, because the time to play a game is too short. Joyce's rule for himself is to never bet heavily, at most ten soli, which is one a half of a pound, even if the cards in his hand are very large, and when his cards are small, he will fold in time. Card To be honest, this game is destined to lose money, but maybe his luck was really good. At the end of the game, he even won nearly two pounds. Since the play time was not long, the dealer did not win much. After the last round was over, Tian Ping said, let's be here today, and play again when you have time another day. The three classmates on the right who won first and then lost were obviously dissatisfied, but still obediently put away the remaining money and left until only the two of them were left in the room, Scale said to Joyce, it's about time for the party, you can go in. According to the waiter's suggestion, he first put on an opaque black cloak, and then put on an exaggerated mask to cover his entire face. After dressing like this, outsiders may not even be able to tell whether he is a man or a woman. Extraordinary gatherings pay the most attention to secrecy, especially for such low-end gatherings. Most of the participants have no means to conceal their identities. Once they are discovered by official personnel, it is difficult to escape the pursuit so this is a necessary protection measure. It's a pity that they didn't know that the organizer of the party was a military informant. Joyce, who was hiding in his cloak, thought it was funny, 
and he couldn't help but think of a classic saying, our leader is actually an undercover agent sent by the enemy. There were about a dozen people at the party, but Joyce didn't count them. That would be impolite and easily seen as provocation. After the number of people stopped increasing, a tall man in the same dress walked in, took a seat in the middle, and said aloud, the party begins. As soon as the voice fell, a young female voice sounded first, I need the single horn of the adult horn Aki's grey goat. Joyce sounded familiar, he could even be sure that this was the main potion material required by the diviner pathway. After all, the name of the Hornages Mountains was no stranger to it. Thinking of this, I have to sigh with emotion, the goddess is really a wolf. Seeing how she couldn't wait, she shouldn't mind paying a premium, but unfortunately no one responded, and the first deal just ended without a hitch. With the beginning of the female voice, people gradually began to put forward their own needs. Most people's needs are extraordinary materials, and a few need magical items but only a few can successfully conclude a transaction. This is the normal state of gatherings. Wild beyonders rely on luck to obtain materials. There was a small episode in the middle of the transaction. Someone asked for the potion formula of pharmacist. This request made the scene quiet. Everyone was silent for a while, and finally the tall organizer who came in chuckled twice, half mocking and half exhorting, I can give you ten copies as long as you can tell the truth from the false. A few low-pitched laughter sounded, and the person who asked for the formula stopped talking. Fortunately, he was wearing a disguise, otherwise the company would be dead. Joyce saw that the frequency of transactions was gradually decreasing, and he asked, I want to know how to wake up forgotten memories. Everyone was silenced again, and just when he was about to give up, a male voice said, you can pray to the gods you believe in, five pounds, and I can teach you the ritual of praying. What's the difference between that and surrender? Joyce said that he did not want to be struck by lightning yet, nodded to the man and said, to make a deal, is there any other way? As far as I know, beyonders of the audience pathway can do this, but there is no guarantee of success. It was the female voice who spoke at the beginning. Thank you. Joyce asked, what do you need? Help me notice the single horn of the adult horn Aki's grey goat. Okay. At this time, the waiter handed over the prayer ceremony written by the man. Joyce glanced at it briefly, took out five pounds and handed it over. He didn't stop, and continued, in addition, the long-term acquisition of quaternary antiquities, preferably the kind that are easy to carry. Is it okay to have no extraordinary power? It's still the lady who is suspected of being a fortune teller. UU reading www.uugonshu.com can. I have a relic of the Solomon Empire. You know the Solomon Empire, right? This treats me as illiterate. History is a compulsory course for an aristocrat, not to mention that I have traveled through and know much more history than you. Joyce slandered in his heart and said calmly, no sum. That's good. The female voice continued, it's a ring with gemstones. It's not very beautiful, but it's very strong. It can even be used to smash walnuts. Fifteen pounds, it's yours. Fifteen pounds is not expensive, but how do you know that you can smash walnuts? Maybe you have tested it yourself. Joyce thought for a while and responded, I need to see the real thing to decide whether to buy it. The female voice agreed to this request, it's very reasonable. I'll bring it to the next party. If you have a single horn of an adult horn Aki's grey goat, I can give it to you as a gift. Joyce nodded slightly and said, I will pay attention. The party gradually came to an end. In the end, the organizer who was sitting at the top said, the rules remain the same. If you want to know the time of the party next week, go to the oak bar to buy a glass of Lelangzi and a glass of Valdos. Buying two glasses of wine before telling the party time? What is this operation, membership fee? The people present didn't ask any questions, obviously they all knew this rule. They left in batches under the arrangement of the party organizer. Joyce was the first batch. 
After everyone left, Mr. Tianping lifted his cloak and muttered to himself, What is the Baron going to do? Should I report to the top? Joyce, who took off his disguise, bought a glass of Lily Longzi, which cost a soul. This is a relatively popular wine. There is no way to tell who is a member of the party. Holding a wine glass, he sat in an empty booth. The two men beside him were chatting happily, and he didn't notice that there were more people beside him. Smelling the pungent smell of alcohol and taking a sip, it was like Urquata mixed with water. Joyce frowned and pushed the wine glass away a little, expressing unacceptable. In the bar, it can be called a mix of people and snakes, such as the two eldest brothers beside him. The two of them were drunk. One said that he had drunk with Admiral Starr, and the other was even more outrageous, boasting that he had been a crew member of the King of the Five Seas, participated in many naval battles, and beat the enemy. It's shit, in which he highlights his contribution, as if he has become the King of the Sea. In the small oak bar, there were two great talents, the Crouching Dragon and Phoenix. Joyce almost couldn't help laughing. He got up and went to the bartender to buy a cup of Vados, which cost two soles and threepence. When the golden yellow, foamy Vados entered the throat, the aroma of wine and fruit overflowed, making people feel that there is a reason for being expensive. But the wine has been bought. Where is the party time? No one told me ah. It's too embarrassing that I gestured to the bartender with my eyes just now. Joyce felt like a clown just now, and he didn't find anyone who bought these two drinks at the same time. Could it be that I misunderstood? No, the party time must be hidden in the wine, do you want me to drink it all? Thinking back to what Tian Ping said, there are no clues, so I continue to trace back. Yes, a card game. The total price of two glasses of wine is four or three soles and threepence, so the meeting time should be three o'clock in the afternoon next Wednesday. Joyce, who had figured out a little secret, felt at ease, raised his glass and took a sip. Then, he knows why no one spends money to buy these two glasses of wine, because they only need to know the price of the wine, and then they can have a drink or just leave. Only he foolishly bought two glasses of wine and drank it. Now, after thinking about it, the wine he had just drank suddenly became unpleasant. He put down his glass and walked out the door of the bar with a blank expression. A carriage with an ordinary appearance and luxurious interior decoration drove smoothly on the street. Pedestrians on the road avoided one after another. Joyce leaned on the soft fluffy cushions in the carriage, his eyes were closed, as if he was sleeping, but in reality he was sleeping. Summarize your performance. In fact, there is nothing to sum up. Before he came to the bar, he didn't know that there was an extraordinary party today, so he didn't think about his own needs. The instigator's potion formula has not yet been found, but this gathering obviously does not have a beyonder with the ability to notarize, and the idea of exchanging formulas or beyonder knowledge has not yet begun. The weapons needed by the assassin already have the most suitable ones, but adhering to the principle that everyone has come, he tried to ask how to restore his memory. After all, the potion formula that appeared in the original book is still very tempting. Joyce took out the five-pound prayer ritual and read it through. He could see that it was a very orthodox ritual, but he didn't want to die. The final purchase of the Quaternary Antiquities is naturally for the seat of the Tarot Club. If you buy the objects corresponding to the red stars on the Origin Castle, it will be a profit. At this point, the series of problems that came from time travel have been basically clarified by him. The next tasks are, exercise ability, summarize the performance guidelines, and digest potions. At the same time, she figured out which Emily's purpose to get closer to her, and obtained the potion afterward. Beyond that, Joyce found himself with nothing to do. As a noble who has just inherited the title, he has no definite position, and because of the unexpected death of his father, he has been away from Byam's social center for a while, and he has not announced his return, so he is free and has to do it. Order something. You don't need to go back to the manor, 
go directly to the training camp. Okay, Lord Baron. After the coachman Carl agreed, he quickly turned the front of the car and bypassed the rose garden, which was close at hand, and the carriage galloped away to the side and rear. According to the laws of the kingdom, nobles have long been banned from owning private arms. Of course, it is reasonable for decent nobles to have well-trained guards. This law is well implemented in big cities such as Backlund, but in a colony like Byam, in order to always guard against the attack of the rebel army, private armed forces have become a good solution. Lieutenant Colonel William Best is no exception. The training camp is located in an open space not far from the manor, surrounded by solid walls. The guards hired by the Best family are training. Provocateur Hunter taunts loudly from time to time, hurry up. Hurry up. My eight-year-old daughter can run faster than you. It turned out that his provocative ability was used here. Joyce kept smiling, refused Hunter's escort, changed into training clothes familiarly, and walked into an empty training room. What does a real assassin look like? Hidden in the shadows, waiting for an opportunity, one hit is sure to hit, and then flees thousands of miles away. Or go on a rampage and kill everyone who sees you in an upright manner. No, that's an outlier among assassins, and they die faster. According to continuous experiments, it can be concluded that the assassin's ability to hide in the shadows stems from the use of light, just like a mirror reflects natural light. When the human figure and the shadow are integrated, the darkness will swallow all the light. You can skillfully achieve the effect of stealth. Due to the limitation of only sequence 9, assassin had better not wear brightly colored clothes, dark colors are more suitable, such as night clothes. In the corner of the training room, Joyce, who was hidden in the shadows, stomped on his toes, and his entire body leaped through the air like an arrow off the string. Holding a dagger in his hand, he left a white mark on the iron doll's neck. The short-term lightness of the body and the instant burst of all the strength of the body, the two are added together, and one plus one is greater than two. Useful for digestion potions. Then, he did some physical fitness tests, and finally came to the conclusion that his strength has increased, his agility has been greatly improved, and his defense is still weak, which is no different from ordinary people. Because it pays more attention to the improvement of the physical fitness of Beyonders, the Assassin Potion does not have the ability to consume a lot of spirituality. In other words, there is no strange mysterious side ability. Yes, become a woman. Why do I keep reminding myself of this? Encouraged the guards who were sweating, UU reading www.uuganshu.com showed the approachable side of Lord Baron, Joyce returned to Rose Manor. After eating lunch, he took a short nap, and after waking up, he couldn't help but sigh, the life of the nobles is so simple and boring. Randomly took out the book from the bookshelf and looked at it. The title of the book was written in Hermes language, the travels of the subconscious mind. Subconsciously, this is the ability of the audience approach. He looked at the author's signature, Polly Del Law, and thought about it carefully. He didn't have an impression, so he didn't care anymore. Turning the page, the whole text is in Hermes. At this time, I would like to thank the original owner for his serious study of the language course, helping him to master Hermes, ancient Hermes, and the source of the northern continent language ancient Fisak. The protagonist in the book is a ghost who can travel through dreams, explaining many psychological theories and conjectures to readers in the interesting dream exploration. When he was watching, he heard someone knock on the door. Come in. Sophia pushed open the door and walked in, softly saying, Mr. Baron, tomorrow's itinerary has been arranged. What do you think? Joyce thought that you are more professional than me in this regard, and encouraged, it's nothing, you did a good job. Well, help me find a box with a lock, it doesn't need to be too big. Okay, Mr. Baron. After leaving the manor, it is better to take the beyonder characteristics and notes left by the father. I didn't know it before, but now that I found it, I still feel uneasy about leaving it here. This is a mentality problem. 
As written in the book, the most feared thing in the human subconscious is not death, but the worry about the unknown. When the content of the dream exceeds expectations, the dreamer will wake up. Unlike the smog that surrounds the city in Backlund all the year round, Bayam in the early morning has fresh air and clear sky, and people can see the blue sky as soon as they open their eyes. The Ston neighborhood is located in the most prosperous part of the whole city. Most of the people living here are the lone people with identities, as well as the local chiefs and other powerful figures before being colonized. In order to ensure a decent and safe upper class life, they ordered a police force, consisting mostly of locals, patrols the stone neighborhood on a non-stop basis. When the genius was bright, the local police in uniform dispatched in groups, using batons and violence to drive the homeless and suspicious elements away. A man curled up on a reclining chair in the park was woken up by a baton. He looked in fear at the two policemen, one long and one short, and left amid their scolding, almost hitting an oncoming four-wheeled carriage. Fortunately, the coachman was experienced and immediately pulled the reins to avoid the accident, and rebuked loudly, You don't have eyes when you walk. The homeless man bowed his head and obeyed, but he couldn't say a complete sentence. Seeing this, the older policeman stepped forward reluctantly and said in half-familiar lone language, Hello, I'm sorry. I'll take him away immediately. The driver was quite frightened and said impatiently, No need, let him walk and watch it later. Sure. After the carriage started to leave, the policeman resumed his arrogant tone and said to the homeless, What are you waiting for if you don't get out, wait for me to invite you to dinner. The young policeman who spent all his savings to get this position saw all this and asked curiously, Why didn't you arrest him? You take care of his meal when you catch him. The older policeman continued to patrol and explained as he walked, These homeless people are eager to be arrested in the police station, they haven't committed any major crimes, they will be detained for a few days at most, and there are still some to eat. Some sleep. It turns out that the young policeman changed the question, whose is that carriage? Look at the badge on the carriage. It's the symbol of the best family. That's a real noble. The older policeman did not hide the envy in his tone. The young policeman has a good memory, recalling the badge that flashed just now, a hammer smashed a flame in the void. Thinking of the scene just now, I felt a little overwhelmed for a while. Even a servant was like this. One can imagine the status of a noble. One day, I will also get this status. The older policeman didn't notice the ambition of the juniors around him. He saw a sneaky figure not far away looking left and right, and immediately shouted loudly, Who is that and what does it do? Don't look at me with such complicated eyes, what I've said will always count, unless, you take the initiative. Several carriages loaded with luggage and servants set off first and Joyce and Sophia also got into a carriage, preparing to leave the Rose Manor. He saw that the lady maid wanted to peek at him but didn't dare to look a little cute, so he couldn't help but tease. Sure enough, hearing this, the maid, who had been pretending to be an ostrich, straightened her neck and retorted in a low voice, I won't. That's not necessarily true. Joyce deliberately moved closer to her and counted with his fingers, I'm handsome. I have a title, I'm young, and I'm very rich. What are you fighting me for? Sophia thought about it carefully, and didn't seem to think anything was wrong, so she said stubbornly, anyway, it won't. Haha, <laughs> very good, very strong, I'm optimistic about you. He laughed and patted the lady maid on the shoulder, leaned back on the soft cushion, and continued to ask, tell me your story. In my memory, you seem to have lived in the mansion for many years. Sophia was silent for a while, and many pictures flashed in her little head. She was actually a very observant. Looking at the lazy man in front of her, she keenly noticed that Mr. Baron had changed, and felt the deepest. The point is that Mr. Baron no longer makes things difficult for himself, and even tolerates a little self-willedness. Maybe I was the first to find out. The maid couldn't help but praised herself in her heart. After sorting out the language, she said, 
Mr. William saved my life when I was ten years old, and I have been working in the manor ever since. Good guy, hiring child labor belongs to. William always likes to adopt homeless children to raise them from a young age, perhaps out of love and justice, and it can be regarded as a means of self-protection as a last resort in the colony. Looking up and seeing that Mr. Barron didn't respond, Sophia continued, My mother is a native of Rorsted, and my father is a ruin. Well, you can see it. Joyce refers to the fact that she prefers the appearance of the lone people, maintains the figure of the local people, and perfectly combines the advantages of the two. Before I was born, he left Byam and returned to ruin, leaving behind his pregnant wife and only a large sum of money, um, for me and my mother. Since Byam became a colony, many ruin people burst into gold rush enthusiasm, looking for a local woman to solve their needs, and after earning enough money, they will return to the country and become a decent gentleman. In comparison, the maid's father left at least living expenses, which is considered a conscience. Joyce's mind kept on thinking, and he asked, and after. Later, when I was ten years old, I was accidentally kidnapped by gangsters. Soon after, Mr. William appeared and rescued me but my mother had been sold to a faraway place and could not be traced. The maid talked about the suffering in an understated tone, as if she didn't care, but the sadness in her eyes was real, Joyce couldn't help but think about what he was doing when he was ten years old. She is probably worried about the increasing number of courses. In order to get rid of the depressed mood that permeated the air, UU reading www.uugonshu.com he concluded, in the end, I was fortunate enough to be my personal maid. How can this be called lucky? Sophia still remembered that Mr. Barron was drunk that day. If she hadn't resisted, I'm afraid. Why, do you feel unlucky? Joyce asked deliberately. Lucky. Sophia replied rather unnaturally, thinking in her heart, Mr. Barron and Mr. William have completely different personalities. Well, the teasing should be moderate. Joyce told himself to stop joking with the maid, put a locked wooden box beside him on his knees, and rubbed his hands, look at it several times, wondering what's inside. No, no. The maid shook her head subconsciously, and quickly said with a blush, I'm a little curious. Joyce tried to pull out a smile, but failed, the contents here are the relics of my father. Mr. William is the most honest and kind person I have ever met. Sophia said this with admiration on her face. A soldier, a soldier who was promoted to colonel by virtue of his military exploits. Maybe, but he was indeed a good father. Joyce closed his eyes and said nothing until he reached his destination. The carriage slowly stopped, and the driver said respectfully, Mr. Baron, it's already here. The maid opened the curtain, Joyce got out of the carriage with the wooden box, and saw a three-story garden villa, number 14 Stone Street, a familiar home. When he stepped into the door, he was acutely aware that someone was staring at him, and when he looked at the source of the eyes, he saw two policemen, one long and one young, the young policeman staring at him, Joyce smiled at him he smiled, turned and walked into the gate of the villa.